recognized as one of the most devastating pandemics in history, the Spanish flu swept away around 50 million people around the world. In just over 18 months, from 1918 to 1919, this virus managed to infect one-third of the world's population. Studies are still being done to calculate the exact number of victims caused by this pandemic, since censorship in the countries involved during the First World War hit its severity. So much, some estimate that the number might be larger than the casualties in both world wars combined. The outbreak was caused by an influenza A virus, subtype H1N1, with genes of bird origin. The exact cause is unknown, but one of the aspects that helped it spread were the small enclosed spaces and the massive mobilization of troops due to the Battle of World War I. Although it is known as the Spanish flu, this name was given not because Spain was its epicenter, but rather because the country was neutral during the war and could report without restrictions on news about the epidemic. On March the 4th, 1918, an American soldier showed up at the infirmary of the military base at Fort Riley in the United States. There, he reported he had symptoms of fever, and in just a few hours, hundreds of soldiers in the exact same base reported similar symptoms. In a matter of weeks, more became ill, and the virus extended outside the base. In April, American troops arrived in Europe carrying the virus with them. This would become the first wave of the epidemic. But the problem was that the country could not report about an illness outbreak to the media, nor its subsequent spread. For the United States and other countries involved in the war, the authorities sought to keep the public's morale high and didn't want to report about diseases affecting the soldiers. This first wave was serious, but it was the least problematic of the three that occurred. The cases were limited and much milder than they would later become. The cases presented were of people who got out of bed very sick. Some even died on their way to work. Symptoms repeated themselves. They would develop fever and shortness of breath, and as a result, the lack of oxygen gave them a blue tint to the face. Hemorrhages were also found that would fill the lungs with blood and cause vomiting and nasal bleeding. What happened in the end was that patients would choke on their own fluids. The second wave happened in the fall of 1918 and was stronger than the first. The first case was registered on the 22nd of August in the French port of Brest. Simultaneously, the mutation of the virus appeared in the city of Boston and came from the American troops that were coming back from the war, as well as in Sierra Leone from a British Navy ship. It took only a few weeks for the virus to reach all of Europe, and the mortality rate during this wave was estimated to reach levels of 10 and 20%. The 13 weeks between September and December of 1918 proved to be the most devastating and intense for the disease, with the highest number of deaths. After the first recorded cases, the virus spread through the military bases and then reached civilian population. In October, the epidemic reached a critical point. There was a lack of coffins for the number of dead, and funeral homes could not cope. Some of the victims ended up in public pits, as individual funerals proved impossible to hold. When the first outbreak of the epidemic happened, doctors and scientists didn't know how to fight against it. At that time, no effective vaccines, antivirals, or any type of medication to combat influenza existed. It wasn't until the 1940s when the first vaccine was produced. And since then, companies have been developing vaccines to avoid another pandemic such as this one. To make matters worse, World War I left some countries without medical personnel, with some even falling ill from the epidemic. <coughs> In certain locations, officials imposed quarantines, ordered people to wear masks, and closed public spaces such as restaurants, schools, churches, and theaters. It was advised for people to avoid shaking hands and to stay home. The New York Health Department even implemented a system to reduce transmission time, and ordered different businesses to open and close at different times to prevent crowds and public transport locations. Finally, in January 1919, the third and final wave of the pandemic arrived. By then, the pandemic had already lost a lot of strength, and the death rate dropped considerably. Australia had managed to avoid the worst of the illness, saw their first cases of the pandemic in early 1919, and it managed to kill thousands of people. Nevertheless, by the summer of that year, health policies and the natural genetic mutation of the virus put an end to the pandemic. Still, its effects lasted for decades. The impact of the Spanish flu was not light. The high death toll managed to wipe out entire families and in other cases left countless widows and orphans. 
Funeral homes continued to be overwhelmed and the bodies kept piling up. Some families even had to dig the graves of their own relatives. On the other hand, the economy suffered a hard blow. Businesses were obligated to close due to sick employees, as well as basic services such as mail delivery and garbage pickup. The fact that the illness would affect young adults between the ages of 20 and 40 years old was another factor that played in the impact of the pandemic. Around the world, life expectancy decreased. During this time, in the United States, life expectancy was around 36 years old for men and 42 years old for women. Meanwhile, in Spain, life expectancy was around 30 years old for both men and women alike. Even though the end of the pandemic was declared in 1919, it wasn't until 1920 when cases stopped appearing. Nevertheless, doctors and scientists were left worried and anxious because they realized that if the virus had already mutated once, it would do it again. And there was no way to determine when or how it would. Even if some of the survivors of the pandemic had gotten immunity to the disease, nothing would stop them if the virus mutated and got stronger. The economic consequences didn't just happen because of the number of sick and dead people around the world. In many of the affected countries, economic activity was pretty much paralyzed because of the fear that took hold of the population. This fear caused situations such as social isolation and stigma to disease. As a result, this caused people to be very afraid to leave their homes, hence making them absent from their jobs, and all of this without the government declaring a state of quarantine. Another economic consequence fell in the hands of insurance companies, ruined by the massive death of young adults during the pandemic. Certain countries were faced with the need to give special credit to people who were not able to cover the costs. These included medical assistance and the implementation of quarantine with the closing of public spaces, the isolation of those infected, the sanitization of individuals as well as places, and the use of masks and sanitary equipment. The Spanish flu of 1918 did not leave any region of the planet untouched. Death toll in India reached between 12 and 17 million people. In Great Britain, it was around 228,000 people, while in the United States, the number was 500,000. The small island of Samoa, 5,000 kilometers away from Australia, lost 23% of its population due to the pandemic. Yet, the death toll between 10 and 20% remained worldwide. There have been other influenza pandemics since 1918. In 1957, Asian influenza emerged with a new type of influenza virus called H2N2. Around 2 million people died during this pandemic. Ten years later, in 1968, the virus H3N2 caused the Hong Kong influenza pandemic. Deaths were around 1 to 4 million in total. But the most recent influenza pandemic, of the H1N1 virus, same as the Spanish flu, was in 2009 caused by the swine flu. The 2009 pandemic emerged in Mexico in mid-March of that same year. The reason why it was called swine flu was because scientists identified the origin of the virus in pigs that was then passed on to humans. Influenza was seen as problematic because mortality rates in Mexico were high and soon the first cases appeared in the American states of California and Texas. There were 18,000 deaths worldwide. The risk of pandemics is increasing due to the overpopulated and interconnected world which we live in. The World Health Organization proposed new measures to manage future pandemics in 2005. This led authorities to review their preparation plans if another pandemic such as the Spanish flu were to occur. The 2009 pandemic proved this opportunity, and many noted that what was most needed was a much faster development and distribution of vaccines. Although the H1N1 virus did not begin or end with the Spanish flu, it still remains as one of the most destructive pandemics in history. The number of deaths, the speed of propagation, and the strength of the virus put it among the most intense pandemics, behind the plague with 200 million deaths and the smallpox pandemic with 56 million victims. Furthermore, the censorship of countries due to the First World War gives it the name of the forgotten pandemic. How much did you know about the Spanish flu? Remember to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Until the next video, 